everybody, it's Jerry Dean from Missing Persons of America. We're gonna go over the case of Madison Bell, who went missing from Ohio. She's only 18 years old, and her car was left behind, and they don't know what happened to her. So we're gonna go over that in just a sec. Bell, she's missing from Greenfield, Ohio. Madison told her mom on May 17th, 2020, says, I'm going to go up to the tanning salon and I will be back. And some time went by and Madison didn't return. Now she had an appointment at that tanning salon and she didn't make that appointment. She just turned 18, so I had a mom, I wanted to give her a little leeway. So I thought, well, maybe she had to wait to get in the tanning bed or maybe she fell asleep like she did the day before. And then I really started getting worried because now it's been over an hour. So her mom, she was expecting her back. She didn't return back and she started to worry about her. And she checked her phone and she said that it pinged back and forth between the tanning salon and a church near the salon. So it's not on the main road, but on the side road between uh, separates the tanning salon and the church and that's where the phone was pinging back and forth. So Madison's mother, and that her name is Melissa, and her boyfriend, Madison's boyfriend, went looking for Madison to see where she was at. They started thinking well, maybe she got stuck on the side of the road and she needed help, they didn't know. So they drove up there, they went over there, and they found Madison's car there. Her phone was laying in the car, the keys were still in the ignition, and And they found that the keys were in the ignition, her cell phone was laying on the seat, the windows were up, and the doors were unlocked. And there was no Madison, no place. And her mother started to get really upset because she knows that, first of all, Madison wouldn't just leave the doors unlocked. She wouldn't leave her phone in the car. Everything, all the things that had happened just was not something that Madison would do. So she called the police. Now the car was left at the Good Shepherd Church on 12920 Ohio 28. And you can see the map where it's at. And you can see across the street is the country corner market and that's where the tanning salon was in that area. Now, a lot of people are trying to speculate why would she park there at the church and not park in where the country store was and we don't know at this point, but it does seem a little bit odd that that happened. Now, the, according to authorities, the parking lot where her car was found is being considered a crime scene. And the Highland County Sheriff's Office is requesting help to search for Madison. So there's been a lot of posting on social media and oh, according to one post, they said there's a bolo, be on the lookout for a white car with California plates. And there, for me, there was some confusion about this white car. I saw a picture of a white car with California plates and Nissan. And it, I thought, is that the car that they're looking for? That Well, they've got the plates, they should be able to find it pretty quickly. And then later on, I heard that the car had been eliminated as having anything to do with the case and but I was still confused because they were still looking for a white car so what I found out is that there was two witnesses and that the, there was two witnesses and an elderly couple and I believe there was actually two sets of witnesses that saw the car in the parking lot and it had California plates and they saw an individual tied to that car too. And the white Nissan with the plates that had the picture taken of it, that was uh, a individual that took a picture of a car with California plates thinking that that was the car the, 
that was being looked for, but it turned out it was not. So they're still looking for this white car. Now there is some video that was caught, that caught the car, but uh, according to Melissa, Maddie's mom, she said that she asked to look at the picture and she said, you can't see anybody inside of it. You can't see the make and model of the car and you can't see the plates. So all you see is like the side of it and we know it's a white car. So the California plate thing, the only thing we have to go on the California plate thing is from the witnesses that said they saw a car in that parking lot and it had California plates, okay? Now, they also said that they saw somebody and there's a description of this person and uh, there was a social media post on there and it says the man appears to be in his late 20s, early 30s and the woman who saw him waiting in the parking lot where Maddie's car was less left also saw the man smoking a cigarette. All right, we have a description of a skinny white male with long blonde hair, not, and then Melissa corrected it, she said not real long, but it was shaggy, uh, wearing jeans and a polo shirt. There's been no information from the police that they're looking for this person or if there is even a bolo. So even though the sad social media says there is a bolo, I haven't seen the sheriff say there was a bolo. Uh, but they did say, the police did say that they received a report about a white car with California plates and Sheriff Barrera confirmed spotting the car on security video, like I mentioned before, and that was when Melissa got a chance to see the photo, she asked to look at it. But authorities were not able to make out whether or not there were occupants in sight. She said, you can't see anything. All right, so at this time, the sheriff had not released the photo. I don't know if it would do any good to release the photo at this point in time if you only got the side of the car, but but I do think that they should at least say something that if you've seen a white car in the neighborhood, go back and look at your, if you have a business in that area, if you have a house in that area where these car, this car would have traveled, then you might have been able to pick up this white car and it may have been able to give a better picture of what this car was. So I'm kind of surprised that the police haven't come out and maybe asked the public, if you got some video, please send it over to us. There has been, I haven't heard anything about this at this time. So if you are in that town, if you're in that area and on that day, if you happen to have your camera, I would go back surveillance video, go back and look at it, see if you pick up anything and if you do, send it over to the police so they can get some more information about this white car. Now the car was last seen turning out of the church and turning left and went on Route 28, which is a shoot you right out of town. So there's been a lot of speculation that maybe Maddie took off on her own, that she couldn't say goodbye to her boyfriend, she couldn't say goodbye to her mother and she just left. But I'm. I don't know who owns that car that Madison was driving. I don't know if it was her mother's car. I don't know if it was Manny's car. I don't know at this point in time. But for her to just get up and go and not come back or not say goodbye, I don't think that this is the case. I know that this happens, but I, but it seemed as though to me that Manny had was, you know, was 18 now, she's graduating from high school, and she seemed to be getting along with everybody, getting along with her family. Now, for her to just get up and leave and not say goodbye to anybody, I, I mean, this happens, but I'm, although I find this a little hard to believe that this is what's happened in this situation. So I am wondering if maybe possibly Maddie was going to the tanning salon, but maybe she decided to meet somebody first. Maybe she had caught contacted with somebody and they said, hey, I want to talk to you or I want to speak to you. And she said, oh, well, meet me here. And she decided she was going to meet them just before she went to the tanning salon. And she didn't want her mom to know about it. She didn't want her boyfriend to know about it. We don't know what the circumstances were, but I'm thinking, well, maybe that's what happened. Maybe she went up there, parked there to talk to this individual 
and then she was going to leave and then drive over to the corner store and go to the tanning salon. But maybe she never got a chance. She would always check in with me if, it was, if she was going to be late five minutes. She would text me, Mom, don't worry. I'm here and I'm going to be a few minutes late. That was her. She always did that. This is a really, really upsetting case because although social media has a lot of attention on it, there's not too much information going out from the police and if this is an abduction, there should have been a lot more going on, a lot more attention brought to this and so that people could be out there looking and helping and figuring out what happened to Madison. If you have any information, please contact the Greenfield Police, let me give the phone number, at 937-987-4468. Six, six. And I got to look like this because I went to the eye doctor today and it's kind of blurry. But I got it. 937-987-4466. All right. That's it for today. Also, I want to say, uh, if you look, the numbers are, are going up slowly but surely. And how much I appreciate that. I just love coming into the studio and grabbing my numbers and, and making the numbers going up. It really, really a great thing. I've the more people I can reach, the more I can let people know about these people missing and get the word out there. And you guys are helping me do that. So thank you very much. All right. See you next time. Bye-bye.